Okay, chapter 4.6 is going to be broken into two parts. Uh, so A is today and B will be the next lesson we do. Um, this lesson has a few skills and ideas you, ideas you need to learn. Uh, the information may not seem to connect a lot, uh, but it does wrap up your unit. I think the unit it just has a had a tough time kind of taking everything from chapter 4, which has to do with relations and functions and organizing in a nice way. So this might just kind of seem like it's a bunch of things hitting you all at once, but I think it's all things that you can do. And again, the good news is you have a very long time to get it down, so you'll be okay. So first, let's look at some vocabulary and terms that you want to write down. Domain um, is the x values of the relation. Again, a relation is any co collection of um, ordered pairs and numbers. And again, in that set collection of ordered pairs, the domain is all of the x values. The range is all of the y values. Now, whenever you have a relation, uh, a collection of numbers, it is a function if each input value uh, of x has only one output value of y. So again, domain is your input value. It's the value that goes in. You usually plug in for x, and then we try to find out what comes out, which is y. And again, a function is a relation is a function if every input value has only one output value. We'll talk more about the function portion of everything uh, tomorrow or in the next lesson but for right now I want to make sure we at least get the majority of those uh, tough skills out of the way uh, next let's look at some processes you're going to need to understand uh, one of those things is function notation um, and function notation is this statement here it's going to say what is uh, f parentheses negative 3 this is called or the way you say it is f of negative 3 uh, again, that's function notation here, so that is read f of negative 3. You could also see it like this. That would be g of negative 3, or you could see m of negative 3. But all that really means is um, that this function here is named f. And so what we're talking about here is it wants to know f of negative 3 for the function f of x equals x squared plus 3. So again, this function named f has a domain value of x and the function itself has a rule of x squared plus 3 and it wants for us to take that function and plug negative 3. Notice that our x changed into a negative 3 so all it's asking me to do is to work this side of the equation. This is not even important anymore once we know what we're plugging in. We're going to take that side of the equation and plug in negative 3. So that, of course, would be something you can plug into your calculator, but I'm not going to do that right now. Negative 3 squared is negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9, plus 3, or 12. So f of negative 3 means take negative 3, plug it right there, find out what answer comes out. This side over here is not even important in that. So don't go dividing by anything or doing anything crazy. All this is asking you to do is take the number, plug it in, and see what comes out. That is function notation. Okay. Another question is going to say, um, talk about domain and range. This is a very easy one, but it's also an easy one to miss, especially on the computer because you know the computer is uh, picky. Uh, when they want domain and range of the relation, it helps if you actually kind of do that for yourself. Domain is x, range is y. Now, an easy way to remember domain and range is x and y is, I told you a long time ago, at least in class, I don't know if I said it on the videos, that anytime you have ordered pairs, they're alphabetized, that if it was A and B, that A would be over here, B would be over here, that if it was M and N, that M would be first, N would be second. Of course, we know X is first, Y is second, but if you took domain and just took the letter D, and you took range and just took the letter R, if you alphabetized them, D would go first, R would go second. So that is your hint that domain is this value and that range is that value. So again, that kind of helps you whenever you see both of them. Now, you do have to learn those words and have them in your brain. But um, in terms of remembering whenever you see both of them, an easy way to remember is that domain would be alphabetized first, just like X is alphabetized first, and range is second, just like Y is second. But all you have to do to do this is write the word domain, put the brace, and list all of the domain values, which would be your X values, in order from least to greatest which means go through, look at all your x's, and say my smallest x is negative 2, my next smallest x is 1, then 4, 
than five. What this is telling the person is that you're in this relation, the x values that you have are negative two, one, four, and five, which is true. You're making room for those numbers. Then when you go to range, you're going to do the same thing. Put your brace, but you're going to look at your y values, and you're going to put those in order from least to greatest. So with that said, you're going to look for your smallest number, which is negative four, your next smallest number, which is three. You do not need to repeat it. I don't need to say if this was a thousand numbers and there were hundred threes, I don't need to say there's a negative four, a three, a three, a three, a three, a three, a three, a three. See how silly that kind of sounds and how repetitive it gets. Just tell them that there is a three in there, there's a negative four in there, and there is also a six in there. So again, your range is just saying in terms of this information here, there's a negative four, there's a three, and there's a six. So that's what you're doing there. And that's all the domain and range question is asking you to do is to go in Make sure you remember domain is x, list them from least to greatest, no repeats. Go to your range, list them from least to greatest with no repeats. That's your answer. So like I said, it seems kind of weird, but it's just more things you have to make sure you remember how to do. Find the range of the function for the given domain. Now, this is a vocabulary question. Again, it helps to kind of remember that domain is x, range is y. So what this is saying, find the y values for the given domain x values so they are giving me x values and they want to know all of the y values that come out so what you're going to do is you're going to take this again this is f of x which just means that it's a function and this is the rule and you're going to take these domain values which again are my x's because they are giving me my domain and you're going to plug them in for y so you're going to do 2 times negative 2 plus 1 which is of course negative 4 plus 1 or negative 3 then you're going to do 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which is negative 2 plus 1 or negative 1. Then you're going to do 2 times 3 plus 1, which is 6 plus 1 or 7. These are all the values that came out. That means that represents my range. And so it said find the range of the function for the given domain. It means that if this was my domain, if all I had in there and this problem was negative 2, negative 1, and 3 for my x's, that my y's would be negative 3, negative 1, and 7. That's all it is. It's pretty much like a evaluate question with three different uh, problems all in one, and you want three different answers or three answers all in one. So again, it's not a tough question, it's just something you need to make sure you're ready for uh, whenever that question is asked. But again, find the range for the given domain means tell me all of my Y answers if I give you all the things to plug in. All right. Final skill um, is determining whether a graph represents a function. Um, we discussed that a function is a relation in which each input or X has only one output or Y. Again, graphically, uh, we have to have that function pass the vertical line test and this should be on your notes if it's not you want to write it uh, somewhere either on the front or the back the vertical line test is passed when no vertical line hits the graph more than once the vertical line is this way so again the vertical line test is passed when no vertical line hits the graph more than once um, here are some graphs that we're going to discuss again just copy them on the back side of your paper I did not want them to be um, just put right in front of you like that because there was no point in doing that question on the back is is it a function please put down the word yes and then we're going to do two or three examples of yes functions one graph that is a function go ahead and draw an axis would look like this make sure you are smoothly going from left to right and the reason it is a function is because in my vertical line I'm going to represent with this thing here. Notice that that vertical line only hits once, that vertical line only hits once, this only hits once, that only hits once. There is not one vertical line I draw that hits the graph more than once. And so this is a function because it passes. All right. You could have one that looks like this. You'll learn about that later. It's called a parabola. And again, this passes because there is no vertical line that I can imagine that's going to hit that graph more than once. All right. Even weird graphs like the square root graph, which looks something like this, 
would pass the vertical line test because there is not one vertical line that I draw that's going to hit more than once. Again, all those are functions because all of my vertical lines cross just one time. Okay. Now, right below that, because I don't have room on my paper, put the word no. And here are some examples of non-functions because they fail the vertical line test. One of them would look like this. It might be the sideways absolute value graph, which looks like that. And the reason is because the way this is graphed, here's my vertical line. And notice that this vertical line hits twice. So it fails the test because it hits twice. That is a no function. So this is not a function because I found one vertical line. You don't need to find more than one. All you need to do is actually just draw it. And once you find one line that hits more than once, that means it is not a function. You could have a similar one to the first one that I drew on the other function. That goes something like this. But again, this is not a function because I can find one vertical line. In this case, that hits three times. And so that fails the test also. All right. It could even be a weird graph. You never know what kind of graph you might have. It could be one of those that actually um, could be a sideways parabola. But anything at all where you see the graph and you can find one vertical line that hits more than once, that means it is not a function. Okay? So that is the three or four things that you're going to be doing today. Uh, just make sure that you have everything understood. And again, just make sure you're trying to kind of scoop everything into one pile so you're ready to use them. Um, this lesson might have seemed overwhelming, but again, you want to you will have until the end of next week to absorb this information in this class because the test is next week. Uh, be sure to study, practice, and ask as many questions as necessary to get the job done. Remember, as long as you do well on that first test, it puts you in a great spot. Uh, also, continue to look at your past information so you can perform everything on demand. What I mean by that is, if I say write a rule, and the rule has a y equals mx plus b, you want to be able to do that right. If I say write a rule, and the rule is a x squared rule, can you do that on the fly? If I say write a rule, and the rule is a x to the third rule, can you do that? Can you write a graph uh, with a positive slope or a negative slope? Can you um, do all the things that we've been doing over the last two weeks? Because all those things need to be done right on the spot. Otherwise, you're going to miss the question and lose some points. So outside of that, go ahead and go to your Math Excel and begin working on that. Good luck.